What's up guys, Sarah Benjamin here for another video. As usual, I'm here with my good friend Ty. As you've noticed for the past few videos, the scenery has changed. We are in my home office studio, and that is because I'm getting surgery on my sinuses. It's nothing serious, but unfortunately, to get surgery these days, you do have to quarantine beforehand. Quick plug, I dropped my new instruction on BJ Fanatics, so check that out in the description. Let me know what you think of the studio space. It's probably gonna be more of a regular occurrence on the channel. I will be filming more often at the Academy. Obviously, it's better because we have much more room, but I will make a few videos at home so that I can get more content out. So let me know what you think of the studio. I'm trying to make uh, the best out of what I got. So anyways, guys, on my channel, we've been focusing a lot on the lasso guard. We've gone over the lasso guard basics, which I'll put in the description, and we've gone over one of my favorite transitions, which is the lasso to single leg X, and then a basic single leg X sweep where we utilize the lasso. I actually had a friend on my channel who also taught something very similar, so I'll link both those videos in the description. Today, we're gonna to be looking at the what I call the basic lasso sweep, which is the sweep that beginners, white and blue belts, hit more often, but I do have friends Shout out to my friend Kai if he's watching this. He's a black belt from Gainesville, Florida. He's awesome if you ever get a chance to train with him. Who This is one of his go-to sweeps, and I don't care who's going against him. He's going to hit it on them if they've never rolled with him. He's unbelievable at doing the sweep. So we're going to show that sweep, and we're also going to show a bicep slicer mixed with an arm lock that is a new take on a traditional submission, and I am by no means an expert on this submission. The way that I know this submission so well is because my training partner at the Bernardo Free Academy, Nick, is an expert at this position as well. I'm gonna try to get him on my channel when I'm back at the academy to show you guys how he does it exactly, but I do wanna break it down and he has caught me in it. That's how I know it's viable and I've seen him catch world-class guys with the exact same position. So let's go over both this stuff. I'll stop rambling. So the first thing's gonna be the sweep. So we're gonna be back here. I've already gone over the lasso basics in my last video. It comes from like a hybrid of the spider. One leg is extended. The leg that's retracted is the one that goes for the lasso. It can be deep or it can be shallow. In this case, we're gonna use a shallow lasso. And oftentimes, what happens when somebody uses a lasso is they forget about this leg and their opponent just throws it by like a punch pass. And then he starts to come to knee on belly. So if this happens to you, you have to be able to time it before your opponent establishes a good side control or knee on belly. And as they come around, you're gonna underhook their leg or you're gonna grab the pan grip on the inside of the knee. I know it's hard to see guys, but like I said, I'm making the best out of what I got. So my right hand is grabbing the inside of Ty's left leg to add some clarity, or my right hand is underhooking his left leg. So he's in a good knee on belly position. I wanna catch his leg before it's kickstanded out too far. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sweep him to my left hand side. I still have my sleeve grip and I still have the lasso. This is a very basic lasso sweep. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make my leg heavy. So I'm gonna to try to apply dead weight to my leg to bring it down towards the mat. And as I do so, I'm gonna pull Ty over me and I'm gonna make him go over his right shoulder. So I have to do a lot of things. First, I'm gonna pull him to where he's weak because he doesn't have a posting hand. So undo the lasso. Let's say I tried to pull Ty this way, he could post that hand. Okay, but since he doesn't have that posting arm and I'm here in this lasso position, I'm gonna still force him to go this way and then this way. So we're gonna go left and then forward over his shoulder. So look, I bring him here, his weight is completely on me and I make my leg heavy and I start to come up into this lasso sweep. The way that we would get up here is we could lift our hip and do a technical stand-up. When you're drilling this, be careful with your opponent's arm, or I could go onto his uh, cross face and I could also apply a top bicep slicer, which we're not gonna talk about right now, but that is a viable option, so if you wanna see that, let me know in the comments. So again, we're here, and we're here. I'll do it a little bit quicker. He starts to throw my leg by. As soon as I see that he's doing that, I'm already bringing his weight over and I'm starting to come. Again, this goes back to the theory and the concept that I always talk about with timing. If you do a technique 100% perfectly at the wrong time, it will not work. If you do a technique 50% perfect at the right time, it will work. And like I mentioned, my friend Kai, who's a black belt at the beginning of this video, shout out to him if he's watching, he's an expert on this sweep and his timing is impeccable. So every time you try to pass his guard, he's already setting the sweep up. You can do this sweep from different positions, right? So I can be here in the lasso guard, and I can kind of feed it to my opponent by coming here, grabbing his leg, and starting to sweep him. So obviously you can set up the sweep if it becomes a staple in your game, but it's a good option to have to try to alleviate that knee on belly pressure, and you can also do it from side control. So the bicep slicer also comes from here when your opponent is either on knee on belly or in side control. So again, this is a staple in my friend Nick's game. I'm by no means an expert and I'm always honest, but it's something that he's done to me and he's shown to me. So again, it happens from a similar scenario. I have a shallow lasso in this situation where I'm hooking the back of his tricep. 
My opponent starts to pass my guard. Maybe I try to go for this sweep, but I'm unable to. Okay, so when I underhooked his leg, I was unable to get the sweep. So look what I'm gonna do. The first thing you can try to do is finish the bicep slicer by figure fouring and pushing in. But a lot of guys won't tap to that. Ty's being nice. Ty wouldn't tap to that. I know for a fact he wouldn't. So if I'm able to, if he tries to go for a cross face, as he does so, I'm gonna clamp down on the cross face, okay? And as I clamp down on the cross face, what this allows me to do is keep separation from his head and chest with my head and chest. Ty wants to get close to me, okay? If he gets close to me, I have issues. So even if he's in side control, I wanna keep that away by doing this. If you notice, his head and shoulder are near my hip. This is gonna allow me to put a tremendous amount of pressure on the bicep slicer. What I do here is I'm gonna push my shin forward as I lift my hips and start to clamp on his tricep here, like so. And he taps, okay? So this is where I'm able to do it. Come closer to me. If he's too close to me and I try to push, there's no way, guys. So it's, we're working with inches. That's again when I go back to that concept of timing. Again, if he's close to me, I can try as hard as I want, guys. I'm not gonna get it, but if I'm able initially to have pushed him far back, it takes almost nothing. I just push a little, and I'm talking a little, and he's tapping. So the combination of this arm lock positioning with the sleeve control allows this to be so much stronger. And here, let me get up for a sec. Initially, when I started training with my friend Nick and he started doing this to everybody, I was perplexed at how he was able to do it so successfully. It's worth mentioning that the inverted arm lock is a, another staple in his game. He has a black belt. But man, it's another, it's, it's just another take on a common submission we see from the lasso guard from bottom that he's made work at a really high level. So again, let's go over the details one more time. Let's change the angle here. So I'm gonna go lasso on this side. Okay, Ty passes my guard. My timing has to be that when he goes for the cross face, I'm already turning him, okay? And I'm keeping my shin, okay? I wanna try to get on my hip if, if possible, but it can be hard. Guys, this is a high risk move. Because if you don't get the move, you're gonna get your guard passed. So I have to keep a lot of pressure, and look what I'm gonna do, guys. I'm just gonna lock my legs, use this leg to make my leg heavy, and I'm just gonna push forward, and he's gonna tap. And oftentimes, they try to circle back to the lasso, and they don't pass your guard because of the pressure. Exactly. And now you're just out of the guard pass. So, guys, super cool technique. Shout out to my friend Nick, shout out to my friend Kai. That's what Jiu Jitsu is, it's one of my favorite parts about it. We're always learning, always evolving. I had seen this bicep slicer dozens of times. I even prided myself on being kind of arrogant and saying like, oh, bicep slicers don't work that well. I've never been caught. And then bam, as a brown belt, I started getting bicep sliced on a daily basis. And I was like, man, I gotta change my game. I gotta be more open-minded. I gotta learn how he's doing this. So guys, thanks to my friend Ty. Bicep slicers can be super painful. Thanks to you guys for watching. If you like this content, please, please, please hit the thumbs up. Give me a like, give me a subscription if you haven't already. And let me know what you think of the new studio, guys. I don't mind constructive criticism. I know it's not the most ideal thing. I'm not dumb. I know it's, it could be better, but look, I'm trying to make the most out of what I got and I wanna keep giving you guys content. And as long as I think the content is beneficial to at least one person, I will continue to put it out. Oh, guys, thank you.